We want to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone to the Quad Cities Chamber webinar for the City of Davenport's Small Business Resiliency Program webinar featuring Suzanne Knudsen. My name is Janelle Wolber and my role here at the Chamber is to connect businesses like yours to financial resources. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we will be recording this webinar and have it available on our website for you to check out later if needed. Um, I want to take a moment to give you a quick update of what's happening here at the Chamber as this is our 10th year anniversary. Uh, many things have changed over the last 10 years and one thing remains the same, our commitment to our members and our business community. Uh, it has been an unusual time and we appreciate everything that you and your companies have been doing to restart our economy in a safe and responsible manner. Not only is 2020 the Quad City Chamber's 10th anniversary, but it also marks the beginning of a new era for our organization. We haven't changed our goals for the coming decade, those being to grow the region's population, to increase gross regional product, the GRP, and to serve more businesses. But our path looks a little different as we move forward. Over the last year, we've worked to streamline our organization and create efficiencies to maximize the, our impact of our resources in the region's economic growth and your successes. The Chamber continues to be the go-to organization for business support, advocacy, and resources. Today's webinar is just one of the ways we're providing resources that you need to grow your business. I'm always available for questions, so please feel free to reach out. And now I would like to introduce Suzanne Knutson, Economic Development Manager for the City of Davenport. Uh, over the past 15 years, Suzanne has worked on some awesome projects here in the City of Davenport, uh, those totaling over a billion dollars of private investment in the city. Uh, and that translates to over 5,000 jobs created and retained here in Quad Cities. Uh, we will have time for question and answers at the end of the presentation, so please include those in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So now, welcome to Suzanne. Thanks, Janelle. And obviously that billion dollars in those jobs would not have also been possible without the assistance of the Quad Cities Chamber. I really appreciate that. It's a it's fun to be here today talking about the City of Davenport's small, uh, small Business Resiliency Project. And I know people have been waiting for this project a long time. Um, myself, like you all, were very excited to get this up and moving out the door. Sometimes we know the wheels of government grind slowly, especially when we're talking the federal government. <laughs> So I know, um, please email, use the chat function to ask Janelle your questions. Questions She can interrupt me along the way. I really want this to be more of a conversation. Um, the Resiliency Project app has been out there for about a month and we just started uh, taking in applications yesterday. To give you uh, an idea, if you're not familiar with what the Resiliency Project is, so early on in COVID, um, Congress passed the CARES Funding Act, and part of the CARES Funding Act uh, went to what's called the Community Development Block Grant Fund, CDBG. So that's how we do a lot of our small business loans or our downtown Davenport job loans throughout the city. This one's a little bit different, so it's got slightly different rules than before, but some of the same things, especially if your business has looked at doing a small business loan uh, with federal funds. So, again, it's for Davenport businesses. While we'd love to help everybody, the, the, the funding is li limited to Davenport uh, businesses. That does not mean you have to live in Davenport. I know a lot of our business owners uh, live outside the area, live outside of Davenport. As long as the business is, is located here, you are welcome to apply. So kind of the, um, the overall overview of the program. We're looking at doing about $20,000 per business as a maximum, call it forgivable loan. Um, love to call it a grant because of the floodplain issues. We have to call it a forgivable loan. When would that loan be forgiven is one of the top questions that I've been getting. Well, if you, if you are chosen and you meet that criteria of your employees are 51% or more uh, low to moderate income, we would be paying you out over a period of three months and it's things like mortgage or uh, rent. It is you know, your utilities, gas, water, electric. It's uh, um, salaries and wages of all your employees, including yourself if you pay yourself a salary, and then kind of operational expenses. So those things like 
if you are a bar or restaurant, your inventory that you're buy, paying for, um, is it your annual marketing um, mm -hmm. contract with somebody? Is it Facebook uh, um, advertising? So all those things are things we could pay for. So if, if Janelle, your business is awarded, uh, yes. Janelle's jewelry. Ice cream shop. Or <laughs> ice cream shop, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go ahead and we were going to pay you out over a period of three months. You've, you've reached your cap of 20,000 and then we go, okay, Janelle, your loan is forgiven. So it's as, it's as simple as that. You, you meet the requirements coming in the door. And then as soon as your, your payments are ended, the loan is forgiven. Okay. Super simple. I just saw one question come up of how do I apply? You go on to the city of Davenport's website. I'm multi-talented this morning. I have this it. This is wonderful. Head. Yes. Go for it. <laughs> Go on to the City of Davenport uh, website, which is davenportiowa.com, and then backslash small business. You'll see the app there, as well as frequently asked questions. So we've got about four pages of questions that um, we've gotten over uh, in, in previous programs. Those seem to have helped uh, direct people where to go. You can email your app in to ed at davenportiowa.com or you can also um, mail it in directly. Did you see any other, oh, our non nonprofits are not eligible for this program. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I saw one question come in early. Um, what was that one? Uh, there is um, a couple of questions related to maybe what money, what the money can be used for. So there's a question about education debt um, and uh, marketing program. So can you clarify a little bit again uh, what the money can be used for? Sure, sure. Well, we say it has to be something that hasn't been um, accumulated in the past, minus, minus your rent and your mortgage. So those are payments that, you know, if you're continuing to make, uh, you can absolutely use those um, to uh, use a small business uh, resiliency project funds for. I would say student loan debt, no, not so much. That wouldn't be an, an eligible expense. Um, if you have, I think, you know, more businesses obviously are incurring expenses with PPE. Mm -hmm. If you have, uh, I'm trying to think, you know, utilities are pretty cut and dry. It's your cell phone, it's your, um, your, your electric, your gas, your water, your garbage, all those things that are kind of your everyday monthly expenses. All those are included. Okay. I suppose um, inventory is going to look a, a little bit different from business to business. For a hair salon, it's going to be um, your, you know, your shampoos, your conditioners, the things on the on the shelves that you sell. Um, mm -hmm. For restaurants, it's going to be your perishable foods, those sorts of things. Okay. Obviously, your salary as the business owner, if you're taking a salary, your employee salaries, and then hair salons, to go back to that example, a lot of them have contract employees, you know, those employees that you give a, a 1099 to at the end of the year, um, okay. those would be included in your uh, operational expenses, because while they're not a true employee, you know, that you're paying taxes for, mm -hmm. they're, they're definitely an expense going out your door. Okay. Um, so we have another question. Can you repeat uh, the website for yes. the city of Denver? It is uh, DavenportIowa.com and then it's backslash small business. So no spaces, okay. DavenportIowa.com backslash small business. Okay. Um, next question. Um, has anyone else had trouble accessing the city website? I've tried several times over the last few days. Have you heard any issues with that at the moment? I haven't. I know typically when I put it into the the bar, I'm still old school and I'll do www.cityofiowa.com <laughs> backslash small business. Um, if, you, um, if you're on Facebook, social media, I know we've been posting it that way. So you could try and go to the um, Facebook site, City of Davenport, look for the link that had that. Okay. Otherwise, email, you can email me directly at ed at davenportiowa.com, ed for economic development, ed <laughs> at davenportiowa.com. It's a lot easier to spell than my full name, so. <laughs> That's fair. 
Absolutely. All right. Um, next question we have, uh, what is the criteria being considered to be chosen? Sure. Well, for the criteria, we go back to the eligibility requirements. You can have 50 full-time equivalent employees. So I know with the state of Iowa's program earlier in the year, they had like 25 employees and that was it. And so I called up Janelle because I know you, you fielded a <laughs> lot of questions and said, okay, what did people run into as far as issues? Mm -hmm. And you said, well, a lot of businesses have part-time employees. So in total, they max, they went well over that 25. Sure. So for a full-time employee, just to use a simple example, if you have two part-time employees working 20 hours a week, they're going to be the equivalent of one 40 hour a week employee. So again, you can have up to 50 full-time employees. <clears throat> you have to have the business here in Davenport. You have to have been negatively infect affected by COVID, <coughs> excuse me, COVID-19. I tried to think if there'd be anybody positively affected by it. I don't know, you know, some businesses <laughs> have uh, received service interruptions you know if you I'm trying to think about what business that might be but if you were lucky yeah. enough to not be, not be affected you know this would not be the program for you okay. um, we need to see that you were in business as of March what do we say March 16th 2019 so basically a year prior to COVID-19 because we really need to see what was your business health like for 2019 um, let's see, if you've applied for uh, SBA funding or the, the payment protection pro paycheck protection program, <laughs> you are still eligible to apply. You just can't um, use these funds uh, for things that you've already been, that have already been paid for um, via like PPP or an SBA program. I know Janelle, what's the other SBA, what's the other word that they use for some of their programs? Yeah, there's the uh, emergency, um, the idle loan, yes. the emergency declaration lo or disaster loans um, with those. So one of the questions is, if I have received a PPP, are we still able to apply? Absolutely. Okay. Um, good. I talked to a bar owner earlier uh, in the year and they said, okay, well, we got, you know, X number of dollars for PPP funds or we had, you know, $12,000 from the state of Iowa can we still apply for your funding? Absolutely. If you've used all that PPP money up, all we just mm -hmm. ask is that you, you know, what did you use it for? So if you had $24,000 and you used it for payroll, it's going to be, you know, here's our $24,000 worth of payroll that we paid out in April, May, June, or June, July, August. We've exhausted that funding. So then we know we can use the resiliency project funding to help fund your payroll for three months or I think I think payroll was the the biggest thing people used it for but if you did have you know mortgage payments just I've already used it here here is what I used it for just some sort of documentation whether it be a, a snapshot of your payroll um, because the feds are big on our case to say you can't duplicate benefits you can't you can't pay for uh, something that's already been paid for with federal funding so Absolutely, apply, apply, apply. If you still have PP, PPP money <laughs> still using, um, we can still pay for things. We just can't pay for for whatever you have remaining. Okay, great. Okay, um, how about a staff question? If your staff is 1099 and not a W-2, do they still qualify? Can you still qualify? Yeah, yeah. Um, what we look at then is if you are an independent business owner or, you know, if you are a, a sole proprietor and you have contract employees, um, you yourself would need to then self-certify. We have that income verification form built into the app. So if, say, you're the only uh, employee, you would be the one filling that out. Because the funding is federal funding, the goal of this pot of federal funding is that we have to help um, businesses with at least 51% low to moderate income uh, households, low to moderate income employees, you know, part of that household. So on the, on the income verification sheet, I think we have columns A, B, C, and D. So based upon your household size, mm -hmm. the a, a through C is what's considered low to moderate income. So your 1099 employees do not have to fill out 
the income verification sheet. Just, just, just the people that essentially you're paying payroll taxes for. Okay. And then we ask for four weeks of payroll tax or four weeks of payroll leading up to the application just to see how many employees do you have. Okay. Thanks. Um, what about the question from Fred? Is this available for startups with no paid employees yet? Only if you were uh, in business prior to March of 2019. Okay. Um, if you don't have any, you know, if you are a sole proprietor and you don't have uh, any employees underneath you, you can absolutely apply. Again, you have to meet that, that LMI threshold. Um, but yeah, you, you, uh, an individual business with an individual person still has business expenses. They might not max out at the 20,000, but yes, absolutely apply. Okay, um, let's see. How do you determine the income limitations for your employees' households? I think you covered that a little bit. But. Yeah, um, excuse the noise of my paper as I'm turning through it. Um, <laughs> it is a self-certification, so it, it, it simply asks the household size and then what is the uh, total annual household income based upon if there's two people in the household, if there's three people in the household. Um, and so it's that employee, you know, filling it out. It's, it is voluntary. Um, we had updated the website oh, early last week. I had a business owner reach out and say, hey, I have a lot of teenagers that work for me. I'm afraid that their parents aren't going to want to give me their income. And I said, it's completely understandable. Um, you, if they don't want to do that, uh, I mean, if they, if they are comfortable, they could fill it out. They could put it in a sealed envelope and the business owner could return that with their application without her ever mm -hmm. seeing it. Otherwise, if we don't receive income verification forms from all your employees, we will just assume the ones that we didn't receive are above income and then what wouldn't count towards that 51%. Okay, oh, sounds good. Okay, another question. I have no employees, but I use a lot of online services. How do I list those? Um, if it's say an online service that has a cost, I would put that would be underneath your, um, your monthly expenses. Okay. You know part of your, um, essentially your operating expenses, your inventory. So online services that you're using would go towards things that could be reimbursed. Okay. And I see somebody asked when the application is due, uh, the last, uh, October 30th. So if you're mailing it in, we just looked that it's postmarked by October 30th. If you're emailing okay. it in by 11.59 p.m. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, you have another question from Rick. Assuming the demand for the program exceeds the funding, how will the amount of the awards be decided? I hope we have more people <laughs> ask for it than we need. I mean, it would be great if the, if COVID didn't have such a big impact, but I expect that we will have more awards. Um, we will have a, a panel of people here in City Hall looking through the applications um, to see you know, looking at what the impact was. So um, if one business had a 10% reduction in business um, versus a, a business that was 50% reduced, you know, we're going to take that into consideration as well. Um, so I think it's kind of hard to say until we get all the applications in because I really don't know what the impact to all the businesses will be, but we will definitely weigh uh, how the, how the business was impacted and as well as where are they at right now? Have they been able to rebound? Um, you know, I think we've seen a lot of diversification in how people are doing things now. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it be through ordering your coffee or getting things delivered or, um, oh, I think like Crafted QC downtown and, and doing like pop-up shops outside and those, those mm -hmm. businesses in the Eastern corridor, like combining together to do like almost little mini markets. So, um, I think it's amazing what we've seen. There's, there's always some silver lining with adversity. Okay, again, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to pop those in the Q&A or chat boxes. I do have a couple other questions sure. um, while we wait for others. Um, so what financial documents for my business will be 
uh, do I need to provide to have the best application that I can? Um, we really need that income statement and the balance sheet. So okay. um, what those are gonna help us see is where was your business in 2019? And in comparison to uh, the first six months of 2020, what was the overall impact to your business? Because the funding is uh, through the feds, they control the rules, and it has to be businesses that were negatively impacted. So we have to show that there was a negative impact to businesses. So um, yeah, the income statement, the balance sheet, I know Quad City Score chapter offers some free services to help people and help put those things together. Um, if you, you know, some, I've been uh, talking to some businesses and they were like, I've been in business for X number of years. I've, I've never done those. And one, I think, you know, those are some documents that can really help you shape how you do your business and make sure you're covering all your costs. But mm -hmm. places like uh, Quad City Score can help help with that. Also, your banker, if you have an accountant. I would assume if you have an accountant, a lot of that stuff that's that we're asking for, they could probably put together for you. Hopefully, I'm not. Hopefully, there's no accountants on the phone saying, no, we can't. But, <laughs> uh, the, that's definitely something that we need with your app. Okay. Um, let's see. If I am awarded money, um, when can I expect that to be? Awarded? Unless we have millions of applications, uh, I expect we'll get through uh, reviewing all the applications in November, um, first few weeks of November, and then I'll be contacting businesses either end of November, beginning of December. It will be you know, a real simple contract to sign because again, like I said early on, our goal is to pay businesses out for three months of those eligible expenses on your forgivable loan. And then at the end of our uh, third payout, your loan is forgiven. So okay. pretty simple. It, it is a rebate program. That's the only thing I don't like about federal funding is so often it's, it's a rebate or a reimbursement. Okay. Our city, our, our city, um, um, Check request system is very good. So uh, if you get us your, your uh, reimbursement information, um, I think it's usually by Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it's Tuesday. The next Thursday, the pay, the, the check is cut. So there is like a week gap. Um, and if somebody absolutely cannot uh, cover something, you know, we can usually work with you. But the feds, the feds, the feds have rules. <laughs> That is understandable. Okay, so let's again run through the timeline. So the application is live yep. now. City okay. of Dav or DavenportIowa.com backslash small business. Perfect, perfect. And the due date for the application is? October 30th. So it's two weeks from today. <clears throat> okay. um, and also, if you get your application in on October 30th and say you're missing something or there's something we have questions on, we will, that, that's not going to, I'm not going to say, boom, your application's out. We will absolutely work with people. I, I fully expect to have to follow up on applications with people. If we get perfect applications in, like, yeah, fantastic. Person. Right. Yes. But Janelle and I work with applications all the time. <laughs> We know that's not what small businesses do. So we tried to make it as simple as possible, but know that if you get an application into us not the last day, we'll absolutely work with you on, on you know, getting in documents as well. Okay, perfect. Um, and thank you to Mike who just put the application oh, yes. in the chat box. So that's available for you as well. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's a lot more words than my uh, small business. <laughs> that's why we have them make the little tiny URLs for us. Because if I said that out loud, like I'd get laughed at. Probably, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then what is the email address if they have questions? One more time. It is ed at davenportiowa.com. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions. So at this point, we'll do our little wrap up. Um, again, I want to thank Suzanne so much for your, your details and putting this uh, project together, this program together for the businesses in Davenport. It's, it's needed and I know people are excited about it. Um, should you have any other questions on financial resources for your businesses, please reach out to me or um, specifically about this program. Suzanne is obviously the, the expert here. Um, she'll be able to, to walk you through your questions. 
Um, again, this webinar has been recorded and it will be available on our website, quadcitieschamber.com. Um, thank you all for joining us today and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you. Thanks everyone.